there's going to be people that are going to like you and people that are not, and you're not going to understand why, and you might have the best <laughs> service and packages. And if I have to fight for my price, then it's probably not a fit for me because we're priced the way we're priced for a reason. That's Allison Campbell. I'm Cara Duffy, and this is the Powerful Ladies Podcast. Welcome to the Powerful Ladies Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I would love to jump right in and tell everyone your name, where you are in the world, and what you're up to, because you're up to a wide variety of things. Yes, I'm Allison Campbell. I'm Heart and Soul PR, based here in Los Angeles, California. And I started this company in 2015 with a mission to really change how business is done, bringing together you know, businesses of different kinds of sizes and shapes to really power their PR. So that's been my main project with Heart and Soul. And I'm also a singer-songwriter. If you go back to eight-year-old you, would she have imagined that you have this business and you're a singer-songwriter? Like, is, is this the life that she would have imagined? You know, it's so interesting because I think I was always curious as a kid, Kara, and I was always just kind of like charting my own path. Mm-hmm. Think that I would have seen myself necessarily running my own company, to be honest. But I definitely know I had that curiosity about life. I was always into, you know, music and creative arts. And so I really got into like the writing space, which is what led me to public relations. So I think there were definitely snippets of a young life that would have led up to the life I'm living now. People get very confused about what PR really entails and what it does and how it can help their business. How would you explain the power of PR to someone who is looking to work with you or curious if it's a good add-on for their business? For sure. And I love this question, Kara, because I think more people should ask. Um, There are a lot of facets to the public relations industry. So I think that's why there's some confusion. But certainly we define it as earned media, which is press that we often get for our clients that's based on our relationships. It's not an advertisement. It's not paid. Um, Though now the PR world is really intersecting and there's what I call, this is kind of how I'd break it down, Kara, is the peso model, which is the paid media, earned media, shared media, and owned media. Because as we know, social media is a big part of the equation. That's the shared media piece where, you know, we're powering our brands with social and that's now part of public relations as well. You know, Mm -hmm. um, our websites are blogs, our newsletters for our clients, whatever those materials are that you have and that you're putting out content on your own is also your own press. So Mm -hmm. all these things really are something we really help our clients define and work. And so awareness is what public relations is all about. Uh, We really want to get the word out to whoever target audience is for X clients and really help them grow their business. Yeah. Well, and I think people forget that every piece of content we put out there is representing us and our brands. And it can be easy to be like, oh, I'm going to post about the dog or whatever. And it really shifts the story and the consistency that people are seeing from you from a digital presence. Uh, How often are you having to not necessarily fight, but challenge clients to stay focused to their core mission and their story and you know, maybe even be more reserved or boring (laughs) from their perspective. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's really defining that for a lot of clients too, because maybe they haven't really told a cohesive story or consistent messages with their company, you know, and what their, you know, product or service might be. So a lot of times we're coming in in that beginning stage and really helping them define what that is, um, which Mm -hmm. you well know, um, how really help them hone in on what those messages are, how they're going to consistently tell their story, why their Mm -hmm. story is unique, why someone cares. So I think all that definitely goes into the press equation as well. And of course, on the social media front, because at this stage of the game, you know, to your point, you know, a client may be resistant um, to whatever that looks like, you know, in the press um, equation, but we have to have social out there in order to one power our content drive more of our target audience and and frankly press are going to be looking at those channels to see mm-hmm. what this person is doing you know well how their how's their business you know moving forward frankly so yeah. i think a lot of times it is 
kind of getting those clients to still, as you said, to take a step back, really understand, okay, this is part of the full picture you need to be considering. And then sometimes maybe even redefining what that looks like in terms of maybe their expectation of what the success should be or how PR is actually going to be part of that success Mm -hmm. because it's not a golden goose for everything. And I think that's something that, you know, especially clients who are just starting up have a perception about, well, oh, if I just get in Good Morning America or, you know, Mm -hmm. in New York Times, it's going to change my business. Well, it certainly is going to put you on the map. I mean, every client wants those big publications, but it's not necessarily going to have your phones ringing off the hook because Mm -hmm. you might get an amazing readership from that, but it might not be your target audience. So I think it's really important that we really drill down with clients. And if you're looking for PR that you really consider, do I have a marketing funnel in place? Do I have Mm -hmm. those proper sales channels set up so that when I do reach my target audience, or if I am utilizing PR to power my business, I have those other things working for me as well. Well, I've had some clients as well who have gotten on the Today Show or Good Morning America, and it's hurt their business because we don't realize, especially in a product-based business, that they might be taking a percentage, or do you have enough inventory? And not just to serve the three to five days that you, while you were on and after the show, But what happens after that? Because there can be such a huge spike in demand that small businesses aren't prepared for the logistics that go with that. Um, It's been really interesting to walk different clients through who said yes and who's passed because they weren't ready yet or it would have completely shifted their entire business model in a way it didn't want to go. Um, So I do think it's really interesting. People want you know, those programs or Forbes, and they're like, that will change everything. And to your point, it, all that matters is who's really your customer and are they are they even paying attention there? You know, that can be a really hard conversation to have with a client, like when they are essentially on a different planet than you know is the reality of how business is operating. How do you have that conversation to get them not you know into reality or at least into your reality in in the press space and working with all these outlets on a regular basis. Yeah, I think it's that expectation setting up front care, you know, and I talked about this um, with David Meltzer and we were talking about PR and the importance of really setting those expectations and that playbook mm-hmm. up front. And I think that's what's important is from the beginning, clients know when they're working with me, I might tell them something they're not going to want to hear, but it's in the service of their business, right? So I think that's first and foremost, it's like, listen, if you're hiring me as your strategic counselor, which essentially is what role we play, we're an extension of their business, then you're trusting my expertise. You understand that I understand what you're looking to do and I'm going to help you get there, but it might be a different way than you're envisioning. Um, So here, and here's why. I think that explaining the rationale, the why, Mm -hmm. the how we're going to get there, um, timelines, milestones, all those things are really important too, because, um, and, and listeners may or may not know this, but I think it's really important um, if you're considering whether you're doing press on your own or you're going to mm-hmm. hire someone to do that for you, there's lead times. And even with yeah. a blog now, I mean, you're still working a few weeks out. Um, as you know, care with your podcast, you've got to schedule out episodes and you yeah. have a whole recording schedule. It doesn't mean because someone's on, they get their episode played tomorrow because there's time that goes into editing. There's time that goes into, you know, getting the, the piece polished. So mm-hmm. the same way applies to editorial. And so that's another thing we're really talking about with clients, especially on that startup um, point, which I call, you know, really that foundation building of month one. Mm -hmm. It's really important to your point that like they understand, all right, what are the types of press we're planning to pursue based on what you've told me? Here's the press, you know, you know, we're going to pursue. Here's why we're going to pursue that, you know, really give them the opportunity to ask questions. I think that's a big part of it, too. So they can really get to understand because a lot of our job is educating. Yeah. them on why. <laughs> right. And so then once I think they understand that it's a much easier journey to that end goal, whether that is a larger placement or whether that's something that might be more niche, that's going to help them reach their audience. You hit on a key point of educating your clients. I think anyone who's in a service-based business I think we underestimate how much time is spent educating our clients because they don't, they're they're paying us because they don't live in the world that we live in. And there can be a lot of people frustrated about 
not understanding and why are they asking us these ridiculous questions again? And it's all because they just don't know. And there are some people who don't know and fully trust you to just handle it and make magic happen. And there are other people whose personality types really is, I need to understand it so I can one, justify the investment and two, like be able to help you in the best way possible. And I, and I've seen time and time again, when there's more education put in, especially in these marketing services with clients, you're able to charge more, land bigger deals, get longer contracts. Like you mentioned the lead time. Like if, if someone wants to hire someone like you, in my mind, it's a six month minimum because it's so much upfront work. And then it's like waiting for the people to reply and come back. And when does the story fit? into the news cycle and what's happening. And most people in the world are not very patient. (laughs) Yes. And, you know, we want what we want. It's human nature. You know, when you're paying for a service, you certainly want to see those results as quickly as you can. And that's something we tell our clients, you know, that's we are. We're results oriented. I mean, you're the same way. It's important they know the end goal, but it is going to take the time together, just like building a business, you know, you're going to need those times. You're going to need those milestones. Um, so we really try to also, I think that transparency, um, beyond the education piece, which kind of goes in hand in hand with that is really important. Um, you know, we really are sketching out all the deliverables, you know, for that month, here's everything we're focusing on. So there's no surprises, you know, um, if there is a surprise, let's talk about it. Let's make sure we discuss it. Oh, there's something new too. maybe the clients introducing, right? So we really mm-hmm. need to know about those things. You know, are they having leadership changes in their company? Do we need to announce something like that? You know, if it's a client, I've been talking a lot to the kind of investor and mm-hmm. like funders and founders that are looking for that press and how, you know, those startups are looking mm-hmm. to use PR to power their awareness to get in front of investors, right? And we talk about the importance of really standing out with your press story, but really more importantly, like understanding, hey, there's these milestones that are going to happen. And as long as you're clear on what those roadmap and goals are just like you are when you're pitching Mm -hmm. your business, then you'll be in good shape. But yeah, I think it's really important to have those educational conversations, manage those expectations, have those check-ins. If something changes along the way, if you get new funding, if that's something you're after, whatever the case may be, Mm -hmm. that also your PR team is super dialed into those things. So we can help, as you said, Kara, tell those stories, see where it might fit in a new cycle too. Because, you know, you might be working on something and as long as your PR team's looped in, it could fit into a really interesting trend story too that's in the news uh, as well, which I think Mm -hmm. is really important beyond just kind of those evergreen pieces. I think it's so important as well for everyone listening who's considering PR to remember that it's a umbrella or halo effect. It, you know, we often want to tie a direct ROI to PR and that's a bonus. It's not the guarantee. And I think that whether it's wanting an Instagram strategy or a PR strategy, like often founders are looking for a hack to their sales goals. And this is to like enhance it, to speed it up. To, but there still has to be that direct selling component (laughs) because there, to your point, there's no guarantee. It's like, we'll get you the press, but what are you going to do with it? And will anyone care? Like there's so many after steps that the business owners have to remember that they still need to be responsible for. It's not, it's not a magic wand. It really is like a, a level up, but not, not a driving sales through the door. A hundred percent. So what made you want to take the leap and start your own agency? Yeah, I love this question, Kara. So I had worked for large PR agencies in my career. I had the fortune of of working with some top Fortune 500 companies and in big agencies. I started my career in New York City and moved to LA, also worked for a big agency here. And those experiences were fantastic. And it's definitely what set me up for success in terms of being able to understand how to multitask, you know, work with, you know, various clients, various budgets, um, really build that foundation that I needed to start off on my own. I had frankly gotten really tired, um, you know, and burnt out in the big, you know, agency space. And I said, you know, to myself, there has to be a better way to, to also work with clients who may have smaller budgets, who need more flexible solutions that, you know, I'm not going to be competing with big agency, but I can give them, um, you know, the same 
level of knowledge that I've gained in the PR experience that I've had, right? I can give them that uh, experience. I can work my relationships. I can give them a level of service they wouldn't normally have had. And, um, you know, it's really been an awesome opportunity. You know, it certainly was, uh, you know, a brainchild that turned into a really, you know, full scale business, which is exciting. And um, I think that's important. You know, I think no matter who you are, where you're at, um, if you have the entrepreneurial spirit and you feel that purpose like igniting inside of you, you know, I would definitely encourage you to pursue it. Yeah. What have you been most proud of as you've gone on to this journey? Wow. I think what I've been most proud of is like growth of myself and growth of the agency. Because like I said, I didn't envision, I didn't necessarily have this like five-year plan for the agency or 10-year plan. I just dove in because it was almost just like, this is what I'm meant to be doing now. Um, So I think those milestones along the way, like coming from, you know, a singular, you know, small client to working with an international fitness brand, that was awesome opportunity. We worked with them for almost three years. Um, you know, so I think really, and then being able to bring other women up along the way, I've had a chance to mentor and work on my team. Um, you know, we're pretty much fully woman powered. Um, and that's important to us, you know, that we give women an opportunity to excel in this industry as well. And I know that's why you have, you know, your podcast That's why you have opportunities for community connection because, you know, women in the workplace, you know, we need more opportunities. We need to support each other. And, um, you know, I'm really grateful to see the growth um, within myself, starting the company, like I said, and then as well, like growing through those growth steps and getting Mm -hmm. those new clients and really scaling the business. When you think of the words powerful in ladies, do they mean something differently when they're on their own versus when they're next to each other? And what do they mean to you? Mm, I love that, Kara. Um, I definitely think they are even more powerful together because like I said, women, we can empower our our own community of women. So powerful ladies being that it is all of us working together, I think is super powerful. Um, Powerful on its own is, is powerful. But when we're putting our collective, you know, uh, unity together and building that, you know, building the community, building, you know, giving women an opportunity, you know, like through your platform, Kara, um, through whatever platforms we have, we're giving women a voice Mm -hmm. and we all need that for sure. I mean, we're still underrepresented as you know, um, definitely in the workplace, women are still being paid less than men. Um, and so I think we're getting there. We're definitely making strides and we can do it together. We're even more powerful. There's been conversations about where are you seeing the missed opportunities in PR and where are you seeing the biggest challenges? Mm, Love that. Lots of questions in that question, (laughs) Kara. So we'll try to break that (laughs) apart. I've had a chance to work with women founders, men founders. Um, Definitely, you know, I think there's, there's just a different spirit there. I think every client has their own personality, no matter, you know, if you're male or female, obviously. Um, I think it's a matter of getting in there and kind of at the end of the day, really applying our expertise, because even if we are, you know, broskies over here, because I've had clients like that, and that's, you know, their vibe and that's cool. Um, We're still coming to the table and we're still Mm -hmm. ourselves and we're we're still presenting what we need to present. Um, I do think there is actually differences in ways that like men and women absorb information. So I'm more of a narrative person. I've learned in terms of, you know, that descriptive language really, you know, coming up with, uh, you know, especially like my media strategies and things like that. My uh, men clients that I worked with definitely prefer bullets. And um, one of my friends in the ad agency world when I was working with her told me this, and it's true. They just absorb information a little differently. So, you know, kind of have to like, chop that up a little bit, you know, when it comes to those nuances too, in terms of like, you know, the end result is going to be the same, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but getting to that and kind of knowing your own client's language, I think is really important in this mix of things we're talking about. Um, I think as long as the person is hiring us for our expertise, and here's the other thing I've learned too, Kara, that I encourage to your point of other, you know, whether you're a business owner or you're looking to go on that journey or you're just listening to this because you want to get some valuable knowledge is that, you know, at the end of the day, 
there's going to be people that are going to like you and people that are not, and you're not going to understand why, and you might have the best (laughs) service and packages. And if I have to fight for my price, then it's probably not a fit for me because we're priced the way we're priced for a reason. And, you know, our experience and what's gotten us here and what's going to work and what's ultimately going to deliver your bottom line for yourself and for your clients. Like what's going to keep you working for that client? You know, if you're just scraping the surface and by the way, no shades of that because we all have to start somewhere. But I think really standing for your worth, um, especially Mm -hmm. as women is really important. Men are they have studies about this, as you know, Karen, probably some of the things you were exploring in your post is like, they are more uh, ready to ask mm-hmm. for what they want and more bold in doing. So we're mm-hmm. definitely taught even from a young age, like, you know, to like be a little less hands off with that. And I think especially as when we have to demand our worth, um, mm-hmm. no matter what we're talking about. So bringing that all like into a nice little package and you know tied with our pretty bow, I would definitely encourage anyone listening to this too, especially coming up with your packages, your rates or things like that. You know, being a woman in the business, we're already, mm-hmm. like you said, going to stand up for some of those challenges. I want to find my ideal client is somebody, and this has to be defined for everybody. I think that's really mm-hmm. important too, as you're navigating your business, um, whether you're looking to bring in press or you're starting your own business or whatever the case may be. Like ultimately, who do I want to be working with? You know, do I jive with this client? Do I jive with this team member? Do I want to spend my time on Zoom with them, Mm -hmm. you know, three hours a day? Do I really feel compelled, frankly, to to what my client is looking to do, right? And I think we have to, sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow because you're like, I might want to work on this business because I need the funds, but like, you can't take it because of that. You know, you got to really be like clear with your mission of like, all right, yeah, this is Mm going to be a fit. <clears throat> chemistry wise, both sides, this is going to be somebody I want to, to your point, grow with ideally long-term as a client. Mm-hmm. And then here's how I can like speak their language, hopefully. And, and, and the other point is I won't be educating too much, if that makes sense. They've yes. already come to me and they're <laughs> looking for somebody who, you know, possesses the skills and knowledge and, and value and expertise they're looking for at the end of the day. Because if it's too much selling, if it's too much explaining if it's too much, well, I'm not really sure how branding or PR or whatever insert mm-hmm. here fits, then it's probably not a fit. And you're probably going to end up fighting an uphill battle that you won't feel good with at the end of the day. So I do just encourage, you know, you have your own checklist um, mm-hmm. of what you're looking for, no matter what stage you are in your business. Well, it's so important that I think everyone remember that business and dating have so many parallels. and like what we tolerate and what we allow in applies everywhere, right? Like why we forget to be selfish, I think, and, and to put our values and priorities first because money comes into the picture. And it's like, time out. We are not going out there being gold diggers when we're dating. Like why would we do this with our business? Like there are people who will pay you what you're asking for, be a pleasure to work with. You'll enjoy hanging out with them. Like one of my requirements for clients is at a minimum, would I enjoy going to dinner and having a drink with them or a coffee, right? If we're not drinking. And then so ideally, these are people I want to go on vacation with. <laughs> like, Love because that. we get, you know how it is. Like we get so involved and it's not, it's not just about the business. Like if you're caring about, especially a small business owner, if you're working with a small business you're worrying about, it's not just them, it's their whole life, it's what they care about, their values and mission are tied into this. It's like you're working with the whole person. And if you don't like that person, you are not gonna be motivated to do the work. You're not gonna wanna pitch them to the the best things. But people that you like and really enjoy working with, you will always go above and beyond for. And you know, like we've, t- I've talked on the past in this podcast about how Nike does such great internal PR. They convince everyone internally first that what they're doing is awesome. And then when they go outward, yes, they're saying that same message to strangers and the, the public, but they also have an army of everyone inside believing it and, and moving the same ideas forward. And you definitely want you and your PR people to to be your biggest cheerleaders, but it has to be real. Like people can right. sniff out when you're like, yeah, they're great. And you're like, no, <laughs> like, 
Well, so you are making a lot of choices every day about where you're focusing your time. Are you focusing on singing and songwriting? Are you focusing on your business? Are you focusing on yourself and your friends and your own self-care? How are you balancing everything that you want to get done in a day, a week, a month and making it work? Love this question, Kara, so much. And I think we need to spend more time on this as women in business, as women in general. Um, you know, no matter where you are, and I have friends who are moms too. I mean, you know, you insert that into the equation. I don't have children yet. I'd like to have a family, but I know that without that, you know, there's going to be certain balances and compromises that are going to come in too. So, you know, that, that said, what I found really has worked for me and where I'm focusing is um, I'm not taking on as many clients. I'm definitely mm-hmm. focused on, you know, just maybe one or two at any one time. Mm-hmm. Um, that also helps me, you know, because I'm at the end of the day too, depending on the size of the contract or the business, maybe mm-hmm. have to bring in another consultant to work on the business with me. Because that's another thing is your pricing, your packages. I would encourage, you know, founders to look at that as well, um, which mm-hmm. I know you talk about too, Kara, because you know, you aren't taking home all of that, even if you're like, Oh, I just got this great contract because you have to, to your point, know what your limits are, you know? And in the beginning, yes, there's a lot of, I'm doing everything and I've got to just get comfortable with that. And as, as uncomfortable as it can be. Um, and I think, you know, I'm definitely to that point in my business where I can bring on you know, consultants or team members when I need them, depending on what the scope of the contract is. Um, so I think that helps. One is just being really focused. And I think not spreading yourself too thin, no matter what you're doing. Um, I've been laser focused this last month and a half, actually, on new opportunities. You know, I'm starting a new opportunity today. Um, and that's going to be a key focus. And I'll have a little business on the side. Um, and my singing songwriting just for like a month. I was just Mm -hmm. like, Hey, I got to put this on pause Yeah, just because I got to stay focused on, you know, bringing this, this new business in, which I did. Right. So that's okay. And Mm -hmm. I think we need to do more of that's okay. And encourage our friends. That's okay. Um, I (laughs) think, you know, because otherwise you're just going to drive yourself crazy. And to your point on the self care piece, I mean, I've, it's, I've had more downtime, even though I've been busy in this new kind of couple months, <laughs> if that makes sense. And it's, it's, it's weird. I was telling my girlfriend the other day, I'm like, I don't know what to do with this downtime because <laughs> we're so programmed into like, yeah. we got to be busy every single like minute of the day. And it's really important. I think, um, you know, setting yourself up for success means mm-hmm. whatever that means to you. So if you need to take more time in the morning because you want to do meditation or you want to write or read or whatever, then you should do that, you know, because yeah. it's going to help you be more productive throughout the day. I think, um, don't over schedule yourself. I think that's a key thing that's worked really well for me. Um, you know, sometimes easier said than done, depending on like where you are with your business, where you are in the life cycle of your client. But mm-hmm. I do think it's up to you, especially if you're your own boss at the end of the day, to create that space for yourself. And you need mm-hmm. that downtime. If you're going to keep going on this entrepreneur journey, you have to take care of yourself. You do. And no one, no, no job will ever love you back. And even your own business won't love you back, <laughs> right? As great as we make it. Um, so it's, I had this conversation with my business coach last night about what, how am I making sure that every day I am filling my cup and giving back to myself at a minimum, as much as I'm giving to all of the clients that we're working with. And it is such a balance because I was bored this weekend and I was like, do I work? Do I, what do I do? Like my, my plans canceled last minute on Saturday. And I was like, what do I do when there's nothing to do? Like, is it okay to watch TV? Is it okay to like, what? Like, it was amazing Yeah. That, that my first thought to your point was maybe I should work more. And I'm like, no, it's okay to just be bored. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we really have to tell ourselves that it's so counterintuitive to what we're programs. I mean, yeah. really, really, really. I mean, I uh, had started to take myself out uh, for breakfast or brunch. Um, You know, I've spent a lot of quality time with myself during this period. Um, I feel definitely um, better because I've gotten more sleep, um, you know, and 
I'll just say this too, because at the time we're recording this, you know, the daylight hours are getting shorter. And I know that mm-hmm. does affect some people. Um, I definitely have felt it more this season. And so, you know, just, um, you know, not my own tips, but things I've read and things that have worked for me in this period too, is getting more rest, um, mm-hmm. you know, hydrating more, eating really great foods that are going to fuel your body for, you know, that next day, um, you know, getting more movement and exercise and especially during those daylight hours. And, you know, someone who sits, you know, if we sit, we're sitting at our computer, mm-hmm all day it's easy to kind of just get sucked in like you said in that problem just all right i'm gonna work and that's it and then all of a sudden you look up five o'clock it's already dark right so i think it's really important to you know nourish yourself in whatever ways that like you said carrie you can fill Mm -hmm. your own cup and be okay with the downtime (laughs) you know we're both telling ourselves that but like you know it's important (laughs) and i hope people hear this and are empowered by that yeah we're so mean to ourselves (laughs) Uh, so we ask everyone where you put yourself on the powerful lady scale. If zero is average everyday human and 10 is the most powerful lady you can imagine, where would you put yourself on that scale today and on an average day? Oh, goodness. Wow. I mean, I'd like to say I'm getting up there, you know, to like an eight or a nine, but like, you know, if I'm looking at most powerful women I admire, they're definitely on that 10. So I can't rate myself the highest, not because I don't have that self-confidence or belief in myself, but certainly I think we're always working and growing towards better versions of ourselves. Um, and I think generally speaking, I pretty much keep that average. I'm a real half glass half full, you know, positive person, you know, to your point, Kara, filling, filling my cup, getting better every day and knowing how to do that you know, balance my time, you know, pour back into myself and uh, make those decisions, business or personal that are going to really impact what I do moving forward. I think Mm -hmm. as we get older too, and I don't know if you've experienced this, Kara, but like, you just kind of like cut out the BS. You're like, Mm -hmm. I'm this person doesn't really fill my cup. Like, why am I spending time with that person? Um, yeah. This business doesn't really make me happy. Well, why am I spending, you know, I think we really get judicious about our time, about what yeah. we want, which is, I think, a great thing. And I think that goes on the powerful lady scale of being even more powerful. <laughs> yep. um, sometimes the less you do is the best you can do, frankly. Mm-hmm. Like, again, what are you focusing on? Like, you know, yeah, okay, it's great. Maybe you're thinking I have 10 things going and I'm like doing all this stuff. But like at the end of the day, have you reached your target? Like, mm-hmm. have you? I don't know. I mean, I have like an ultimate multitasker. I like being really busy like you do as well. But I think at the end of the day, we have to really go, okay, what, what is, did I do that and sacrifice myself or am I still balanced? And I think if you can still say at the end of the day, you're balanced and you're doing everything that fills your cup, you can be a really powerful lady and you're going to (laughs) keep being able to keep that number on the scale because you're consistent and you're happy with yourself and you're growing. And um, I think that's all we can ask is to keep growing, to be the most powerful lady we can. The last question for today is what do you need? What do you want? What are you manifesting? How can this community help support or give you the, the next thing that you need? Well, thank you. I love that question. I am always open to referrals um, in terms of business, especially because I like working with brands and clients that have, you know, been endorsed by people I know in my community, um, you know, and so I think that's really important. So that's great. Um, I'm always open to, you know, uh, adding one or two clients, depending on where I am in the cycle of business Um, and just connecting with other like-minded women who you know, want to grow, want to learn together, want to like build community. Um, And that's why I love, you know, having the opportunity just to even talk to you and be a part of your community, Kara. So thank you for creating that space. My pleasure. So for everybody who wants to refer someone to you, work with you directly, meet you for brunch, where are all the places they can find, connect and follow you? Yes. Yeah, so uh, our website is heartandsoulpr.com, um, H-E-A-R-T-A-N-D-S-O-U-L-P-R.com. Um, I'm also at Heart and Soul PR on Instagram. And then um, as far as my music, at Music to Change the World Now on Instagram. Um, and, you know, I'll be doing some more live shows in 2024. We're going to have a good time next year for sure in terms of manifesting, you know, hopefully, you know, get... Uh, my full album release, Kara, when it comes to that side of things next year, that's when I'm manifesting uh, more shows, uh, Mm -hmm. more opportunities, more paid 
opportunities, you know, in the music space, um, in terms of PR, you know, like I said, just those right clients that are gonna, you know, be great to work with. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I think those are the, the key things, but yeah, you can find me any of those. And I'm always happy to, if, if someone's listening, Kara, like if they're just interested and have questions about PR and, you know, we can set up a time. I'm more than happy to have a discovery and just kind of learn what they're, what they're looking for and, um, offer my services that way as well. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for taking time today to hang out with me and share your story and your wisdom about PR. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have this morning with you. Love talking to you, Clara. Thank you so much. All the links to connect with Allison, Heart and Soul PR, and her music are in our show notes at thepowerfulladies.com. Please subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening and leave us a rating and review, please. Come join us on Instagram at Powerful Ladies and connect directly with me via caraduffy.com or at Kara underscore Duffy on Instagram. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode and new amazing guest. Until then, I hope you're taking on being powerful in your life. Go be awesome and up to something you love.